Hey guys and welcome to the second round of the 1993 STSL BTCC Championship and today we are here at Donington for the second round of the championship and we are using the Grand Prix circuit for the first time after the 1991 season and yeah here's the track map 4.0 kilometers long with a race lap record of a 137.4 driven by Vic Rune in his Toyota Carina uh, and he has also won the previous two races so he was quite quick around here, but he's not he here in the field today because he was banned. But uh, now we look at the today's field and we go from the starting grid and we have Lorenzo Torrey on pole in his Ford Mondeo. Uh, behind Torrey is Roy Cobb in his Ford, so Ford 1-2. Then we have Mike Bell in third, ahead of Johannes Melis. So this time Mike has beaten him in qualifying already, uh, unlike Silverstone. Then we have Simpton and Sneef in 5th and 6th. Then we move to the second page of the table with David Osborne in P7. So the second Nissan driver is a bit far behind but uh, we are sure that he will be constant and he will get the points for Nissan. Then we have Wesley Brook in 8th. A newcomer to the series, Emma Hamut in his Parkland Toyota Junior Team car in 9th. Then with Matt Hole in 10th in his Walksoul ahead of Pekka Litalo in his private BMW and then we have in 12th spot David Todaro in his Peugeot. And now we look into race 1 of the two races in this weekend and it slides out and away we go and the, per and the BMW of Pekka had a good start behind. It looks like Roykop had the best start of the forts, and it looks like he's taken the lead. And of Tori, there's some chaos behind. I've seen some smoke, but I think everything went clean so far. There was no big uh, pile up or something, luckily, and yeah. So it seems like everything went cleanly, but now we look into. I think it must be Sneef's view. And ooh, he hits Simpton. That's why there was some smoke because Sneef has, yeah, given given Simpton a little a little bump. And there we are at the newcomer, Emma Hamut, and he's currently second to last. So he hadn't got the best start, but he has a long way to ahead of him. And uh, maybe he can prove himself already in the first race. And he's alongside Pekka now. And can he get past? Yes, he does. And he's upper place, so he's now third to last, so he must be 10th right now. And there we are with Wesley, I think. And he's battling against Matt Hole. And. Yeah, is he finding a spot to pass? I think. No, he doesn't. He has to back off for the moment. But Matt makes a mistake. This gives Wesley another chance to get by. But Matt has not a better acceleration and I think Matt can save his position for the moment at least. But it looks like Wesley is going a bit quicker than him. So it's only a matter of time before he gets passed. And there we have David Osborne again fighting against Sneef. It was one of the talking points after the Silverstone race. Uh, yeah, there were quite some entertaining battles out there between these two. Maybe they continue their fight here at Donington. It looks like it because uh, they're still <laughs> fighting now. At the moment David is behind but maybe he's going for attack. But now we look behind and that is Matt Hull making a mistake and Amir Hamoud is going by. He's looking for Aif I believe and he gets by. But where's the purge of Wesley? Has he made a mistake or something? Maybe the uh, cameras have missed him. But there is a Persian missing. And must be Wesley. And now we look at Mike Bell. The faster Nissan driver at the moment. And uh, he is currently in third. Behind Tori and ahead of Melis. And yeah he's... I think he's trying to find any opportunity possible to go by but uh, of course it's not easy 
Now we look into Osborne's view and Sneef makes a mistake and this gives Osborne an opportunity to go by and he uses this. And he goes by so he takes now I think 6th at the moment. And there we go once again here with Amir Hamoud. So his first race and he's already in the picture from several times and he's now trying to go by the walks of Matt Hole again. I think this time he makes it again. Oh no, not quite easily. The walks are still fighting. Amir hits the grass. I think now he's losing the speed and the momentum he had. Yes, he does. He has to back off for the moment. Or can he find the yeah, can he find the space there? No, he doesn't. I think he has to back off right now. Yep, he does. And now he's Ooh, that's I think that's Matt Hole. Yeah, so Amir has got past him off the cameras and Matt makes a huge mistake. This might be the chance to pack up but he, no it wasn't. So there we have the Persia of Wesley again. Uh, he went missing for a moment and he goes by Pekka really easily. So the BMW is still twitchy as hell and Pekka still needs to adjust to that kind of driving. But uh, anyway now we look into Mike Bell's view again and he sees the Renault coming. Of Johannes Medes. He was quite quick around here, surprisingly, because last year he was a bit uh, angry at this circuit. But now he's setting Mike under pressure, and it doesn't look like Mike had the best of all races. Look at it. The banana is fighting against the Japanese uh, car, and Medes now search for opportunity to go by here. This is whiskey, but I think. Is he making it? No, he doesn't. He backs off. I think that, that was the right decision because, uh, of course, you have to think about the championship and, of course, about the safety. Even if it was a virtual race, but uh, there are still rules. And here we have Wesley again. <laughs> fighting against the walks of Hull. So, he's everywhere. <laughs> so, shout out to Matt. You're everywhere right now. So, uh... Derek Wesley again, he's going for the outside now for the first corner. Uh, I don't think that's the right side. Oh, does he make it? No, he doesn't. Maybe a switch back? Yes, he does. Now he has the better chance. I think now he needs to go by. That's the opportunity and he sticks it. He goes by. And yeah, now we go here for the outside view of Chris Simpton. Uh, he was in the picture as often right now because he drove for quite quite a lonely race out there. He had no chance in front and yeah, he was no uh, danger for the cast behind. So uh, Chris, a really boring race from his point of view, I think. And uh, yeah, I think the only thing he had to worry about was to bring the car home, bring the points home. And yeah, now we see Roy Cobb taking the final corner. I think we're on the final lap now and he comes across the start finish line to take the victory, his second win of the season. Well done Roy, ahead of Turi. Uh, and then we have Mike Bell who was challenged by Melis for the whole race, for the whole end of the race I have to say. So still start race by them and there we have Chris Simpton finishing the lonely P5 and I think Osborne will be 6th at the end of the race. So Chris took the final corner, he comes now through the start from the straight and there we have Osborne. So that's the top 6 for this race. But we look at the back now for a moment because there's still some fighting going on. Yes, there are some fights in the final lap and Hamoud makes a mistake. I think Brook goes by. Yeah, that's very unfortunate but uh, that's why you call uh, racing goes on until the final lap. And until, until the checkered flag. So here, here we have the race results. Cobb wins the race ahead of Tori, Bell, Melis, Simpton and Osborne. So that's a solid top 6 for them. So now we look into the second half to the grid and we have Sneef in 7th ahead of Brook, Hamoud, Hull, Litalo and Tudaro. So not a good race for returnee. Todaro, uh, who came back after he missed round one, but now he's back, hopefully for some more races. And here we have some off-screen action. 
Um, before you wonder what we are doing there, offside the official races. Here you have some proof that uh, we can still have some fun, and Todaro proved it here by, yeah, being sent to the mat Matrix. I would say, <laughs> look, he's oh, there's a car. I, I haven't noticed it. There's this, there was a car flying. Of the barrier so that's really interesting to see and there we have the drift contest presented by Pekka Litalo in his BMW he searched for the perfect opportunity to drift and is, is he going to make it yeah no he doesn't but still in terms of style and because he's a Finnish person he gets a 10 out of 10 I would say and okay now I think it's time to return to uh, we are racing then and we stop looking at those funny moments. So we have to down on pole and lights are out and away we go. And the thing I haven't mentioned is that Alan Kopich has returned for this race. But uh, we get to him in a moment because Todaro has lost it in the first corner. And there was some more crunch behind. And we have to say there was a restart before. Because uh, we had some incidents before, and there we see Melis force Toby to go wide, but I don't think it was intentional. But anyway, oof, 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 what a hectic start, I would say. And uh, look at this fight they're going on. There's so much battling now in the first lap because the grid is all mixed up, so you have the slower cars driving in front and the faster drivers. Yeah, they're on the back and they have to fight back. And Pekka is searching for alternative lines there. Whilst Hull is leading the race out of Sneef, I would say. Yes, he does. There we have Symptom getting passed by Bell. And now Symptom is being chased by the Ford. Might be, Lo um, no, might be Roy. And it is. So Roy Cop is on a chase. He is on a mission. And... Yeah, then we have the Parkland Toyota being chased by Melis. So there's so much battling going on right now. I could have made thousands of replays there. Oh, there's... It was a bit tight here around this chicane. Uh, I would call it the chicane of death. Uh, because you really have to take the perfect racing line there to get the chicane right. And here Hamoud is letting Melis by, basically. So quite an easy move for him. And... Now we look in the front again and Sneef makes a mistake and Bell goes by and the Ford of Cop might go through as well. He outbreaks himself but he might get a better traction off the outside of... Uh, no, what, what am I talking there? But anyway, Cop gets, gets past now. My goodness me, I'm so bad at talking right now, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, Cop is taking the second position whilst Melis goes by. Uh, Simpton there and yeah he's up to fifth position oh no he doesn't he doesn't fully go by there was a little bump here okay there was a good this is a good fighting there between Simpton and Melis really good fighting there and Turi is also at the back and there with Alan Kopic there in his Parkland Toyota there we have him at front I think it must be uh, a car behind. I don't know which car it is at the moment, to be honest. It might be a Peugeot or something. Or, I don't know, maybe Osborne. I have no idea. Uh, I haven't checked. But Kopic, yeah, he uh, had to reinstall the game and he just arrived in time for the second race. So it's great to see him back anyway. And, and was on board of Osborne eventually. Now we go on board with uh, Melis. And oh, Simpton outbreaks himself. He collects Sneef, and well, that was easily the best maneuver Johannes has ever done, or maybe the easiest move, because he hasn't, he couldn't do anything there. Oh man, what what an easy move there! And Cop passed Bell. I just saw uh, on my eyes. So uh, the switch of the leadership here. And it is Cop who takes the lead. He was quite clearly the fastest driver here in this circuit. And this race weekend, I have to say. And, uh, yeah. So he might take the win in the second race as well. But now we see Simpton fighting against the walks of Hull. And Simpton 
yeah, takes the position or defends it. I've already forgotten. I'm sorry. Uh, I would assume he just took the position from hole. There with the uh, Parkland Toyota of, I think, Kopic. Or we will see... No, Hamut, I'm sorry. Uh, Ami Hamut is fighting now against Sneef. And Sneef goes by. Yep, really easy move, I would say. But still, you need to ball to go round the outside here in the chicane. Because, look, it's quite tricky there. To go too wide there. Because you need to worry about the car who is on the inside. Because the curbing is so terrible. And there with Sneef. Going off the track, he searched for alternative lines there. Oh, there's a walks are rolling! It's, it's Matt Hall! What happened? Oh my goodness, being a typical walks are rolling. As continued, was another car went off the track in the background. You might have a replay of this afterwards. And there we have the uh, Toyota of, I think, Hamut going by the winner of Sneef. Or oh, does he? There's some nice fighting going on. Sneef has to defend now. And he has a better line. I think now he's done it. And that made Sneef defend his position really well against Hamoud. And behind him is another Parkland Toyota. So that's quite interesting. Now we're going to replay what happened to Matt. Really, what happened? Oh, he hit the curb a bit too much, I would say. Yep. That's what you shouldn't do. And, uh... Oh, there with the Persia going off. I think it was Todaro who eventually went off. So, once again, the Persians have become a meme, I would say. Uh, nothing really works at the moment for this car. And there we have Turi. We had a better accident Melis. He's now going from down the inside there. And I think now he needs to get by. Uh, but... Yeah, looks like Tori is going by. But no, Melis is defending. He had the better exit. Wow, what a fight there between these two. But can Tori fight back? And looks like Tori is going to get by. But no, Yas has got the better traction there. And he defends successfully. Wow, what a fight there between these two. But it's weird to see a Renault 19 in there. I'm sorry, but it looks so weird against the other cars. I have to be honest. Um, and there, we have to look at the pit stops as well. Because it, this is a Formula B race. I forgot to explain it. And here, you have one uh, mandatory pit stop between lap 5 and lap 20. For this circuit, at least. And Sneef is the first one who's doing a pit stop. Which counts, eventually. So Sneef is going for the Sneefy strategy again. As many have, have called his strategy Colts, I would suppose. Where does he end up? I think he will be dead last or something. Looks like it. Yeah, it's, it is a long pit lane eventually, so uh, you have a long time to chill and to just think about the race. And then with the second Renault going in, so yeah, maybe Sneef has influenced the strategy of the Renault camp because Melis is going for the early pit stop as well and uh, there was a thing many people have noticed because the Renault has actually really good tire wear around this circuit or maybe it was a setup because Melis went actually quicker at the end of the race and maybe he thinks about this and he decided to go in really early and now, where does he end up? Because he was a bit more towards the front. Uh, if you discount Sneef. And looks like he ends up behind a Vauxhall and a Persia. And there we have a Toyota. Must be Kopic. Uh, that, that was a costly mistake, I would say. And there we have Matt Hall. He's going down the inside there. And he takes the position. But I think Matt hasn't defended, really. And Todaro lets him buy quite quickly, but he lets Hall buy as well. So, weird stuff here going on. But Mike Bell has now entered the pit lane. I think it was the same lap, or was it a lap later? I have no idea. That's the issue here. You don't really see it. Now, the question is where Bell is going to end up in the pit lane. 
Is it going to be ahead of Melis? Yes, quite comfortably. So it wasn't a good lap from Johannes. So yeah, he might have dropped some seconds there. But now we see, is it Tori there? I think so it is. And yeah, it will be close between him and Bell. Is it going to be ahead of him? No, it doesn't. It wasn't enough and Bell has taken the position. But Bell makes a mistake and it's, it is Tori fighting back. And they go side by side down right to all the hairpin. And now they are. Is Bell is fighting back that all the hairpin. They go side by side. Wow, look at that. Weird, weird stuff. They're almost touching. I think now they've touched. But Bell is finishing ahead of Tori. Nice job there by Mike in his Nissan. And you have to be honest, the fault is quite quick. Especially Lorenzo is really, really quick. So it is a nice thing for Mike to be ahead of him. At least in the moment. Then we have Roy Cop the leader going into the pits. And... Yeah, this is for the victory now. Oh. What's that? What's that? Oh no! Has he actually missed his pit box? Or something? Oh dear, no! No, come on! No, this must be a joke! Oh! No! That's gone horribly wrong! Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! Look! He cannot change tires! Nothing happens! Oh no! That's a huge sh shameful leader and I think he has to go again into the pits for the tires. Oh no. That's unfortunate for Roy. And he was so bloody quick and now this sort of thing happens. He drops back to fourth and I think his race is basically over. He's just going to collect the points he needs to. And uh, that's it basically for him. And uh, yeah. really, It's really a shame for him. But uh, yep. He needs to recover from that. As good as possible there. Whilst we see Wesley Brook in a fight between him and Pekka. And the BMW here. Fighting again. So it's, it's great to see the BMW fighting. Especially in the hands of a privateer. And you have to think, he's the only private in this field right now. And, uh, yeah, maybe you will join this league as well. So, if you want to, uh, there will be a link in the description on the website for the website. Where everything is basically really clearly instructed how you can join this league. And now we have Cop again into the pits. I think now they've registered. Oh, we need to change tires. Yep, there we have... He was resetted and I think now the tasks are going to be changed. Yes, yes, I've seen some work there. Really shame for Roy because now he's dropping back and uh, he's dropped out of the contention for the win. I think now it's between Tori, Bell, Melis. Um, yeah, so really shameful for the team as well. There behind, there's a purge of Todaro, I think. Going into the pits. He has found his pit box allegedly and yeah cop goes out of pits and yeah he's really far back and now we are here with David Osborne oh he's losing it he tries to save it no he hits the he will hit the barrier there he does and this will cause a huge load of damage to his wear oh dear David this kind of damage is quite horrible I, I can tell you with uh, my experience I had uh, whilst I had one kind of incident like this. When the wheel is damaged, oh dear, this is not going to be fun. At least from my perspective. So, cop goes by there quite easily. There we have the Persia fighting against the BMW. Or not. Or not. He decides to go on the grass. And, yeah, he has to, he has to catch up again for the move. And uh, this, is, this is quite amazing to see, to be honest. Uh... The guys fighting in the back. And also the front here. This, this is Melis. He's going down here inside. He's now alongside Mike. It looks like Melis is quite quick here again. So, yeah, it looks like Mike is dropping there a bit of time. 
But uh, yeah, anyway, Milis has to go by if he wants to have a chance or a shot of the victory here for this fifth race of the season and in the second round of the championship. David two Persians fighting there. I think it's Sodaro going by against Brook. Yes, he does. And yeah, Sodaro is in the upper position. And yeah, what a nice move there by the Peugeot. And now we go some corner later. Uh, some corners later, I'm sorry. And uh, I think in the moment both Parkland and Toyotas have retired already because of disconnects. So quite a shame for Amma and uh, for Alan. Maybe they will return quite better prepared maybe or maybe with a bit more luck for the next round at Staterton. Well, it's now we see Todaro attacking Lintalo. Oh, he's going there. There's some bumping. I think now Wesley, he's going for it. And he's going by. Ha, ha, ha. Look at this fighting there. Incredible. I think now the lapping has already started. Tori has already lapped the first one in this mat. In his walk soul. But now it's getting quite interesting here. Between these. And then we see Pekka. Being lapped by Lorenzo, and everything goes on and on and on. <laughs> oh dear. This won't end well, maybe. Uh, because lapping people is not fun. And uh, now we have Todaro being lapped by Turi, but he is blocking a bit at the moment. But uh, yeah, lapping people is not as easy, I would say. And yep, Turi now gets by. But this will be quite interesting for the cast behind, like Bell and Melis, because they are in a fight. And Litalo and Hull are now fighting as well. And now, Bell goes by, and I think Melis will go by as well. Because if not, this won't be really good. And yes, he goes by. He breaks a bit late there for the corner. And I think he's hit Bell a bit. Yeah, but oh, there's some little spinny thing here for Packer. Now we got. On board here with Johannes. Yep, he gives Mike a little nudge here. Uh, but everything is fine. There's no damage in the car. So uh, everything should be fine by now. Now we look into the Peugeot. And I think it's Todaro. And he says Sia <laughs> on his own way. By yeah hitting the wall straight. Not really good. But uh, yeah, anyway, if you want to do this, uh, it's up to you. If you want to do this or not. But now we have Melis again fighting against Bell. He goes down the inside and he takes second. And I think he would be quite happy with this. Uh, because I think he felt like he was quick in Bell. You've noticed it. He was coming quite close in some of the corners. But now he has to defend well against Mike. We know that he can uh, have some nice battles with people. And uh, yeah. It looks quite interesting here. And there's Wesley broken away right now, so he might irritate some people. And but now Mike. He has a better exit now. Wesley goes wide. And now they are going free wide there for a short moment. But uh anyway, Mila stays ahead. And uh yeah. I think my voice is uh, dead at the end of the recording. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, what I do for YouTube, it, this is incredible. But now Bell, he's going side by side with Melis. I think Bell has successfully passed him again. And the battling goes on, I would say, between these two cars. We look now at the back again. I think uh, we see the BMW for the most part here. I think uh, the BMW is maybe one of the most featured cars right now. Because we see the BMW literally everywhere. So uh, Pekka is making some uh, ads for Team Dynamics. And he fights with Hull. Ooh, there's some like, nice fighting going on. It's actually nice to see Pekka fighting. Because uh, actually I've, I've expected to yeah, have a bit of a weird season there with this twitchy beast. Uh, because this car is really hard to handle, I can tell you that, and uh, it's not really nice to drive. You need to master it, but if you don't master it, oh, there, Packers losing it. Ooh. 
Uhuhu. That's not really good for tires, I would say. But now Todario is search for an opportunity to go by. And I think now he's found the opportunity. He goes down the inside. Oh, there was some collision. There was a collision there. But it, yeah, this, this that's a racing incident, I would say. And uh, anyway, Litalo is now back in last position, sadly. And there with Balamides again. Look, these two are fighting now for the whole second part of the race. And now Melis twice the same move again, but this time it didn't quite work out that well. Bell is defended successfully. And yeah, that's uh, another place there. Uh, another fight, I would say. Uh, for second. And it's quite nice to see these two fighting. It makes a lot of fun, so maybe we'll have uh, replacement for the Osborne Sneef show here. Um from Silverstone. We have the Bell Melis show here at Donington. And this is the last lap right now, by the way. And Melis is trying it again, but the fact this time Bell has been really, really smart and he outplays Melis. And this time he doesn't get another chance to go by. He's too far back. And Tori comes around the final corner and he takes the win. His second one this season. So he equalizes with Mike in the points table. For now, at least, and uh, yeah, they have some nice uh, show here at the end in the first corner after checkered flag. So, Belfield second, Midas third, Derek Simpton once again a quiet race by him. So, I don't think he had the pace for front, but he wasn't as bad as the cars behind him. So, uh, yeah, a solid race by Chris. There's nothing more to say about it. And uh, we look at the race results soon. They're with Roy in fifth. So good comeback by the fourth. And uh, they have the race results. Tori, Bell, Melis, Simpton, Cobb and Sneef are completed in the top six. So another good result by the fourth crew. And I think Roy will be yeah, disappointed. He could have won the race and I'm fairly sure he would have. Because his pace was incredible. I think his fastest lap was even... 7 tenths faster than uh, the second placed fastest lap. And there we have the rest of the table. Osborne, Brook, Hull, Todaro, Litalo and DNF. Uh, we have Kopic and Hamoud in, a bo in the Parkland Toyota Junior Team cars. So not, not a good race weekend for this team but uh, it was still nice to see them for the first time and hopefully we'll see them in the future as well. For the next couple of races. The next race will be Snetterton. And uh, it might suit some fast cars there. Here's the driver's, driver's championship. And as you can see. Uh, Lorenzo is only leading by one win. Ahead of Mike. Then we have Cobb in third. Ahead of Melis and Simpton. Melis and Simpton are only uh, one point adrift from each other. Then we have Sneef and Osborne. Brook, Litalo and the rest. Here are the manufacturer team championship standings. Team Mondeo is leading ahead of Nissan and then we have Renault, yeah, with a big gap ahead of Toyota. Then we have Peugeot, Walksall and the Parkland and Toyota Junior team. With only 7 points, but I mean it was their first entry now and maybe they'll come back in the future. So that's it for this race. Thanks for tuning in and hopefully we'll see us then at Centerton and next week. So stay tuned for more.